Today we're going to paint peonies in a vase, and the fun thing about this is finding the value shapes and putting color into it. Let's get started. All right, first I want to talk about peonies just for a second. This is not a peony. This is some kind of rose, and the difference with roses is that they are more cone-shaped, and the petals at the ends are quite rounded, and that is not true with peonies, or most peonies. Peonies tend to be uh, flatter, rounder forms, more like platters, and the edges tend to be kind of jagged and sometimes square. And they have uh, quite a bit of concentration of color in the very middle where the petals meet. So one thing about painting peonies in general is just to have some, um, just some observational skills about the difference between the different flower forms. And so peonies are quite different from roses, although there are some similarities. So this year I wanted to do something different. I do paint peonies every year, but this year I wanted to do something different because what you just saw was some peonies up really, really close. And what I wanted to do this year is to really pull back and uh, simplify the forms as much as I possibly can. And like I said, not be right on top of the flower forms, but have the flower forms be part of a, a bigger composition. And the reason for doing this is just that for me it's going to be a challenge. Every year I paint peonies, but I want to paint them differently this year because I don't want to paint the same paintings over and over again. That would not excite me. Um, I'm making some color dabs on the top left. I'm putting in my dark forms first. Now you'll see as we go along, you'll see the picture right there of the peonies, and you'll see that my painting is not going to match the exact picture. My goal is not to be a photorealist and create the exact same photograph that I have here. I want to simplify, use as few strokes as possible, find my darks, my mediums, and my lights, turn them into shapes, and then when the shapes are near or close to each other, they, in, in a sense, will make the forms. So I'm still working on making the darks here, and I forgot to make color dabs as I went along. Usually in these demos, I will make color dabs. My reason for the color dabs is that I do usually separate my color dabs into darks, mediums, and lights. So now I'm leaving the darks, and now I'm going into what are going to be my mid-tones, or my, medi my mediums, as I call them. I need my finger here because um, I, I need to track where the mediums are. And most of the painting does have mediums. And um, so I'm using a variety of colors to do this. You know, mixing one color just isn't going to uh, get the effect that I want. So I have to mix several colors that are mediums and place them next to each other. And that will start to make the forms. The important thing here for me is to, no matter what, no, no matter what starts to happen in my head in terms of thinking, is just to keep saying, what shape? what value, what shape, what value, meaning value, meaning how dark or how light something is. Now, I needed to take care of the whites of the flowers in some way, and so I used a neutral for that, kind of a gray. And like I said, my goal is to define forms, but not to, um, not to get fussy. This is um, arch paper, cold press, and the size of it is about um, an 8 by 8 inch Eight by eight inch square? Yeah, something like that. That sounds about right. Um, now it's time for the background. The background is going to make the foreground pop. Now what was important here was to have a light background. I could have done a dark background. Can you imagine, for example, a really dark purple behind that? That would have worked too, but I would have lost, lost a bit of the softness that I have in the overall composition. One of the things about painting flowers, at least for me, is that they tend to be soft forms, and I, I want them to remain soft. I want to have lost and found edges, and I also want them not to... Um, I also want my background to, to blend in with my actual painting, rather than, you know, have an, what I always call an island surrounded by oceans painting, where you have flower... you know, I could have put the, these flowers and then cut in a dark color around, the back, but it would have looked as if I had, um, you know, cut cut something out and then glued it on. I'm always trying to integrate things if I can, and I'm always trying to find uh, color within color. Now I'm going back in and looking for where my darkest darks are. 
and reinforcing that. There aren't many really dark darks in those flowers. There are a few, and I have to be careful about where I put them. But again, my goal is using as few strokes as possible. That may not be your goal, and, and that's fine. There's, you know, the wonderful thing about all this painting stuff is that there's no one way to do it, thank goodness. Everybody does it their own way, and, you know, therefore we have a community of, of uh, that, that's a really fun community of people who interpret things, you know, the way they see them. The other thing that happens, I think, with painting, and maybe this has happened to you, is you think you want to paint things a certain way. I always have something in my mind of how I want to paint it. <laughs> There's always the painting in your mind, and then the painting that you actually do. Oh my goodness, we could talk forever about that. You know, you can't hide from your own style, just like you can't hide from your signature when you, when you write a check or something. Your signature is your signature. And so I had an idea of where I was going with this, but of course nothing ever turns out exactly the way I had it in my head, and that's because it's going through the filter of uh, my Joe McKenzie brain. So we're getting near the end of the painting, and I want you to remember to keep the whites of your paper white, which I left the table white here. So keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, meaning find your shapes, and mix for color. Use your color to go into those shapes. So mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.